Hello, this is the second video where we are going to use decision trees to classify outcomes in a data set. So on this uh, video, we're, in this video, we're going to actually take a look at a specific problem and we will do our best to categorize uh, customers in this data set uh, based on uh, their features. So in this data set, we do have a bank retail manager, retail banking manager, um, and what they are doing is they offer home equity line of credit uh, to their customers. And due to recent decline in business, uh, manager is trying to investigate the reason, potential reason for it. And that manager believes that it's not due to the recent decrease is not due to the competitiveness of the bank's interest rates, but something else. Therefore, they put together a data set uh, that consists of 500 past customer information, like their age, gender, income, and whether they took the offer or not. It is, it is zero if they did not, and it is one if they did. And they would like to come up with a decision tree for predicting whether or not our future bank customer will respond to bank's equity line of credit offer. Okay, so let's go to our studio. And let's import our data set. And I'm going to show you what the data looks like. Okay. Um, and it looks right. I'll click import. And the data frame is imported. And what you see here is the age of the person, um, sex, uh, female or male, income level, well, actually their income, uh, and then whether they took the offer or not. Previously in the Titanic data, all our uh, features were categorical. And this data set is to tell you that actual decision trees can work with any type of data, whether it is categorical or it's numerical, um, decision trees will uh, do the work for you. Uh, of course, the quality of decision trees, it has to be um, uh, you know, trained with the best parameters and then you have to make sure that it is actually giving you good results. So that's a different discussion. Um, but the decision trees will be functioning on any type of data, okay? Um, as we did in the previous video, we're going to set a random seed and we are going to create train and test data based on these randomly generated information. So let me go ahead and execute these lines, okay? I created my test and train data. Um, and then we use our parent for uh, putting together a decision tree object. Okay, you can name it any, any, any way you like. Um, one thing that I would like to show here is a way to represent independent variables. So if you go to the Halog data set, what you see here is actually, I'm working on the train data. What you see here is um, age, sex, income, and Halog call. All, right, all my columns are relevant in this decision trees, right? Halog is going to be my, um, dependent variable, I represent it as my dependent variable. Tilde, I put a dot here that indicates that anything other than Holoc is going to be on the right side of this equation. This is a shortcut uh, it could use in our formulas, okay? R is smart to understand that this dot represents H plus sex plus income. Okay, that's actually what it means. And you don't have to type H plus sex plus income all the time or any other independent variables. This is valid for multiple linear regression formulas. This is valid for any type of formulas, okay? And then the data we tell R to use the train data method is class because Halloc is um, multi-levels, so zero or ones, right? It's not analog because this is not a continuous um, number. It is either one or zero. And this is what our decision to, to, to work on. And I execute it and I see that you know, my decision tree is ready. And what I do here is I take a look at the numbers that the console gave me, but they don't really mean anything to me. It's very hard to interpret those numbers. So that's, um, that's actually um, visualizing, okay? Um, and our part that plot is going to help us visualize our plots. Okay, so let's go to our part dot plot. Well, first we have to load it, if you have not loaded it. We have to load it by library rpart.plot. Let's do that. And let's run line 16. 
it gives us the decision tree plot and let's try to make sense out of it and let's try to see what insights we can get out of this graph okay so let me zoom in a little bit okay here uh, we do have zeros and ones so zero indicate that um no the customer did not take it and one indicates that the customer took it um, I'm going to briefly tell you what's going on again one more time so you will figure out the rest. So here, um, the root node is basically telling us that we have the 100% of the data here and 27% declined, 27% actually uh, took the offer, right? This is less than 50% threshold. Therefore, this node is labeled as zero. Okay, and the sex information is used next. Okay, and so this side indicates um, sex equals to female, no, therefore it is actually male side here, right? All right, so here, this is the female side. Okay, all right, so if you go to the female side, okay, if you go to the female side, let me clear my annotation. What you see here is in this decision tree, uh, if you go to the female side, you do have a label of zero um, because only 7% of your customers um, took the offer. Therefore, the, the node is labeled as zero node or no node. And 55% of your train data belongs to females. Okay, so if it, if your customer is a female, this indicates that it's very hard for them to accept offer. On the other hand, if you are working with male customers, what you see here is 3% took to took to offer, and it, um, your your male customers um, constitute 45% of your train data, and therefore the age column comes next. So if age is less than 25. If it is left, yes, then we go to the left. And if it is no, we go to the right. That's what the decision tree directions uh, tell us, right? And if it's a male column, and then if your age is less than 25, let's see the overall labeling. Well, actually 0% of them, uh, you know, for example, males uh, whose age is less than 25, nobody took your offer, right? And that is actually 5% of your overall data, train data um, customers, right? And if, Again, your customer is a male customer and the age is not less than 25. It is greater than 25. You go to the right and what is going on here, then the income level comes into the question. It branches uh, out of income. Uh, first of all, let's take a look at this node. If it is male and if the age is greater than 25, 25 was picked by the by the model. So you didn't have to tell anything to the model. And it basically tells you that this node is labeled as one because there is 60% chance that you know, your customer is going to take the offer, okay? And this portion of the data constitutes 39% of the entire training data set. And if the income level is less than, I think this is 12,000, right? E to the power of three, which is basically 12 times 10 to the power of three, 12,000. If your income level is less than 12,000, again, here, it's a male customer, its age is greater than 25, and its income level is less than less than 12,000. Let's see what's going on. Um, none of them accepted it, okay? All right, so let's go to the income level greater than less than 25 it's here okay and if it is greater than 25 again we come over here and then question on the income level one more time um if the income level actually um greater than uh, 12 000, um we do have the yes probability of 64 percent and therefore this node was labeled as one if you keep going further down in the three you see that income level is going to pop up uh, over and over and then age is going to come back into question here one more time you see that age and income uh, are the two important columns when the model is trying to make a prediction or classification out of it 
and you can definitely try to see which customers belong to strong yes category, which customers belong to strong no category, so that you could do maybe a resource allocation uh, to reach out to those customers who are in your yes categories, right? Um, you could do certain things like that, but this is the training data, and let's see what we can do with uh, with the, with, the, with the test data. Or right, let's first take a look at how we can actually see the necessary statistics like accuracy, sensitivity, and specificity. All right, so as I said, as I showed you in the previous video, you could actually bring out the certain percentages on a different graph by running this extra feature. And if you'll zoom in, the differences here is basically, it gives you the yes probability and no probability uh, on each node. If it is something that it would like to desire, then you can run your plotting with this feature, extra feature. It's not a mouse, but it is something that you should be aware of. Uh, you can make the predictions on both test and train data. Uh, so if you do the predictions on the train data, the decision tree predictions can be seen like this. And let's calculate our statistics on the confusion matrix, okay? And then you see that our confusion matrix is telling us that the accuracy here is 87%. That's very good. Um, Let's see, specificity is low. Um, sensitivity is good too, and specificity is 76%. It's not really that bad, but it is again struggling on identifying customers who said yes to us, right? Um, proportion wise, uh, customers who said yes to our offer, and then we predicted that those are going to say yes is 73 out of uh, 96. And therefore, your specificity is lower than your sensitivity and accuracy uh, levels here, right? So this is uh, our training data. Let's try to predict our test information. Again, when you use the predict function, you have to use new data feature and make it equals to test. Okay, let's see. Those are our predictions. They don't really mean too much to us because we need to go to look at the confusion matrix. And when we do our accuracy level, um, it was on the training data, I think it was um, 87 percent on the test data, it goes down to 77 percent. Um, this is fine. Um, we might see a drop in accuracy on the test data. We might see um, increase on the on the accuracy level on the test data. Uh, but if there was a, sh a very you know sharp decrease in the accuracy, for example, it was 88 percent, and our accuracy went down to 50 percent, then it's a good indication that we were overfilling our decision trees in the training data, okay? But this slight decrease, 10% decrease on the test data, I'm just going to decide to ignore it and try to actually run with it. And you see uh, the typical, or not typical, but you see the same struggle here. The specificity is low, and that is because our model this time um, is having also a problem with identifying the customers who belong to the yes data. Maybe we could play with different parameters or maybe we could also take a look at to see how logistics and last or ridge regressions are doing on this method, whether they are struggling as well uh, as uh, this entry is, as, uh, you know, this entry is definitely struggling identifying the, the customers who said yes. Um, we could do a couple things here. We could either try different parameters that's not in the context of this video or we could utilize some other methodology some other techniques like lasso reach logistic regression or even different models to see whether they are actually um, seeing or identifying or classifying these customers in a better way okay in a, in a nutshell um, uh, this video with this video I will, wanted to tell you and show you that uh, decision trees can work with um, both categorical and numerical data and then visualization of this, um, these, these models are really insightful and really can tell you a lot about your business and your customers. Okay, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you on the next video.